¿Quién se llama Jenkins Green? Oh, can you go I see my Jenkins screen or it's still uh, the PPT? I think we can see it there. Okay. Jenkins. So we created this job last time. Okay, get job. So in the get job, what we did, uh, we were just uh, creating. We just linked it with our uh, git repo. Yeah. So we uh, linked it with our. Okay, we linked it uh, this with our git, uh, git repo. Okay, we added a credential, okay, and uh, that used to build our project and bring everything to the workspace. Like I showed you the workspace as well. What is the default uh, Jenkins workspace? Okay, the big uh, build trigger. If we do not specify anything, it is <clears throat> it is nothing. It's 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 a manual build. If we specify a build trigger, then someone like it would be triggered by something. So we selected this GitHub hook for triggering our GitHub SCM policy. So this whenever uh, uh, someone used to commit in our GitHub repo, our build used to trigger. Okay. Then uh, in the build step, what we were doing earlier, we were building it like this. We used to use a Java C compile command, hello dot Java, Java, and run it using Java hello. Okay. And if you uh, if we see the logs, we could see everything like how the it is running and all the logs and everything. We could see that. Okay. And we could also uh, go to our uh, Workspace. So I showed you where is the workspace. Where lib Jenkins workspace. Okay, inside this workspace, if you go on your, um, so this is your workspace. So this has all the jobs that uh, you have. Okay, you have. Uh, we had this grid job, CD, grid job. So in, inside this, we used to have all the. Uh, uh, so whenever your build gets triggered, your Jenkins will pull the code from the GitHub because we have linked it. Now uh, it pulled both of these. It pulled uh, just it pulled just hello dot Java from our GitHub, okay, and it compiled it. So hello dot class dot created, and it ran it using uh, Java, okay, Java uh, class name, and it got run. Okay, and then we used to uh, see we saw the output as well. Hello, how are you? Or, these things we used to get it <clears throat> okay but in project it's, it's not as simple as you see it's not a hello world project correct in the industry we don't we do not write a hello world project the projects are very big okay the projects are very big it might not be uh, a simple like a one file project one uh, java file project there are multiple levels of there can be hundreds of java file in a single project if you are if you are using a uh, creating a web application then you might have also resources your JavaScript files, your HTML files, your CSS files, okay, and your uh, uh, like your project might need various dependencies, okay. Uh, for example, uh, when you are working on a framework, okay. So these days, what happens? Uh, we have various frameworks available. We have Spring, Hibernate, and these frameworks we have. So these are making everything abstract, correct? These these are making every, uh, our life simple. We just call a command, we just import something uh, and we can start using it. That's it. Okay, that is make our, that is making our life, sim life simple. We don't have to write the complete code, code uh, for uh, Spring and those things. We just uh, add Spring in our uh, project and we just start using it, start using the uh, method that they are providing. Okay, it's- uh, uh, all Sorry, a bit confusion about the, uh, bit confusion about the purpose of Jenkins, I was uh, having an issue with that. I mean, could you okay. explain a little bit background about uh, Yeah, so, so Jenkins, uh, so Jenkins is all about it. It it automates everything. It is for like I told you example like earlier what used to happen, a person used to commit a code. Okay, he used to commit a code in his repo. Okay, then he would go manually build his uh, code, create a jar file. Okay, then what he would do? He would manually go and copy the jar file into a repository. Okay, Nexus or any any particular repository. Okay, he would copy that uh, jar file into the repository. And then from that repository, the jar file would be uh, manually deployed on any server. Okay, that used to happen, right? In a in a non-Jenkins, in a non-Jenkins in, in environment, I'm saying. But Jenkins is automating everything. 
it is automating the whole build life cycle it, it, it is automating the whole project life cycle now oh, you have okay. a job now you have a job which you just trigger which you just create okay your job you have created that did job we just created now we don't have to do anything we have linked a github repo with our project with our job we have linked it and whenever someone is uh, uh, someone is uh, committing anything committing any code making any code changes okay my project is getting triggered my this build is getting triggered and what my build is doing it is doing whatever i specify that build to do okay i can build the i can uh, bring the code from git to my repo to my workspace and then i start building it and then i run it okay all these things which we are doing manually jenkins is automating every automating everything oh, okay, okay okay even even the testing we have it's not similar to get hub then yeah it's similar to get right jenkins hmm no 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 J github is for source code management github oh, okay. is for source code okay. management for keeping your code for keeping your code okay. and versioning for that for that okay. we have github but jenkins okay. is for okay. automating the whole project life cycle okay it's for automating okay. the whole project okay basically lifecycle. scripting right you execute the script and then it's automatically does the um Yes, you can assume. For you. Yes, you can yeah. assume like that. It's a kind of script, but it is not a script. It's better than a script. Oh, okay. A script would also do auto automation. Automation you can achieve in various ways. Okay, you can write a script that would uh, go to your repo, uh, build, uh, okay. uh, copy the code from your repo, store it somewhere, and then run a Java Java C command, build, compile it, then uh, run that class file. Okay, and then it would do a unit test. then it would do oh, okay. integration test then it would uh, uh, deploy that build file uh, that jar file into any server okay then mm -hmm. after deploying it would do a test so this everything you can do you can write a single shell script okay you can write a single shell script for that but that would not be clean right that would be code okay so jenkins mm -hmm. process, you can configure everything you can whatever i whatever steps i told just now you can configure the all the steps You can okay. All the the whole project lifecycle can whole, be automated. Whole project, okay. mm -hmm. correct. Whole project. Okay. That is why Jenkins is used for CI and CD. That's what we covered in the last session, right? So in the Jenkins uh, session, we saw okay. that Jenkins mm -hmm. can be used for CI and CD. It integrates with everything. Jenkins will Jenkins can integrate with everything you can imagine. See, this is a I have I told you Jenkins will integrate with Maven for building. It will integrate with Selenium for testing. it mm -hmm. can integrate with oh. sonar cube for code quality checks then it would also deploy on your uh, servers on your uh, on your uat environments it would deploy and after that it will do testing as well on uat environment you can uh, specify the test then it can deploy in your production environment so everything starting from developer commit committing a code till the deployment and maintenance everything you can do using jenkins okay either you have you are right you can write yeah. a shell script you can always go and write a shell script but you can you imagine how difficult would it be to maintain it okay but jenkins it life okay. life your life becomes easy okay github is just one of the tool github is one of the tool with which jenkins is integrating okay github is for source code management and version control that we saw in uh, two two classes back oh got the reference okay yeah yeah thank you so yeah so i was telling you that uh, in a real life our project is not very simple it's not a hello world project where we have just one java file i was telling you about frameworks like we have big big frameworks hibernate uh, hibernate frame this we have spring hibernate uh, things spring boot and these applications we are having so there we do not write lot of code there it's it's all automated most of the things are automated there we just uh, provide our inputs provide our parameters and Uh, provide our parameters and just feed them to some methods, some Spring methods, some Hibernate methods, and everything those methods are doing. Okay, so so we have we have so many dependencies, correct? We have a Spring dependency in our project. We have Hibernate dependencies in our project, in our Java project only. Okay, we have so many Java files. So maintaining all these things is not easy. Correct in a big project, in a big organizational project. you might have various types of dependencies for testing let's say for unit testing you might you might write uh, j unit methods for unit testing we use that 
J unit, view selenium. Okay. So all these for all these views, jars, correct. We have the jar files of that. We don't write selenium code. Okay, we don't write the we don't write the uh, library code in our when we are doing. We not write the whole uh, thing what our selenium is doing and then write our code on top of it. Correct. We are using the selenium libraries. We are using the J unit libraries. We are using the Spring libraries. We are using Hibernate libraries. Okay, and on the top of it, we are doing our project specific things. Correct. So. Uh, so that that's where you need something to manage everything. You need something to manage all these dependencies to manage all the jar files. Like you have a developer, let's say your developer is building an application. He writes, uh, he has to write hundred Java files, let's say, okay. That, that are importing that having that are having various dependencies. For example, one of the Java file needs uh hibernate dependency. One Java file needs, uh, uh, one part of the project needs hibernate dependency. One part of the project needs, uh, your testing module, let's say your testing module what you written and needs a selenium dependency. Okay. So what you will do for running uh, selenium, you will install selenium. Okay. For running spring, uh, for importing, uh, for working on spring, you will import or download spring dependencies. For working on Hibernate, you will download Hibernate dependencies. Okay. Before, uh, so after that, you will start working on a project. Correct. And what happens after the version changes? Okay, what happen if you what happens if you want to uh, uh, create a want to build uh, your Java project on the top of latest Spring version? Okay, after a year you are upgrading, let's say. Okay, and you build only you want to build your project on top of latest Spring version, latest Hibernate version, latest Selenium version, latest J Unit version. Okay, so what you will do? Again, you will go and download it. Again, you will go and download the latest versions of these uh, softwares so for, for these libraries, and then again start working on it. Okay. And, and what would happen? Uh, then like, like, like I said, a Java a developer has to manage hundreds or hundreds of Java files. He will create, uh, uh, 10 Java files in one directory. Okay. In other directory, he might create other 10, other 20 files in other directory. Okay. And, uh, when it gets built, okay. When a Java, a jar file out of which it gets built. Uh, so when you compile a Java code, a jar file is created, correct? when you build a Java for jar, jar file is executable. Like it's executable. When you compile a Java code, uh, this class files are generated. So these class files will be generated here and there. Correct. You have so many hundreds of Java files. And so when a next when another person comes in, he wants to look at the project. So what he will see, he, will he be able to understand the project? There are so many directories, directory inside directory, so many Java files lying here and there. Okay. Every, directory is having the class file particular to that Java file. Okay. And when you, uh, when you want to create a jar file out of that project, uh, it would be created some, somewhere outside. So it will, it will, it will not be managed. Correct. Getting the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Getting the issue, right? This is the issue that we used to have, but Maven made our life easy. Okay. So there was a requirement of a project management tool. Okay. There was a requirement of a project management tool that would manage our project. Okay. There was a requirement of a convention. Okay. That every, every kind of a project would follow that convention. Okay. This type of Java files has to be created in this folder. All the HTML files have to be uh, stored in this folder. All the CSS files have to be stored in this folder. Whatever uh, class files will be generated after the Java files have been compiled, they will get compiled into this folder. Okay. When a jar file gets created, generated, it will be generated in the target in this folder. Okay. So, and all the dependencies, when, uh, uh, let's say your hundred of Java files require, uh, 50 dependencies, 50 spring files, like some of the just spring spring libraries, some hibernate libraries, uh, uh, some J -Unit libraries, uh, different kinds of kinds of libraries, uh, they have dependencies on. So there should be a way to, uh, so Maven, what does it, 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 uh, arranges everything. It arranges everything. Okay. That's why it, it is, uh, it is more than a build tool. Okay. It Maven is more than a build tool. It, it is not just building your project. Building means building actually means creation of a jar file. Okay. When you have a big Java project, 
uh, you might want to create an executable correct a jar file or a war file correct if you have a website let's say if you have a website okay then you will have a war file you will create a war file and that war file will contain all the code of your uh, website okay you may do a jar file a java bunch of java jar java files can be uh, built into a jar file okay these are executables dot jar dot uh, war file similar to your exe file you have exe right you just execute it and your code runs okay that is your that exe file comprises of lot of things correct it's not it's, it's it looks like a exe file to you it's just an executable file for you but there are many things inside it okay this is this is uh, exe files are built after building something right building a code they are building executable file and handing out handing it to, over to you instead of giving you the whole code okay so so this was the requirement of having a project management tool or a build tool okay getting it getting the idea raj any yeah. any uh, confusion no pretty very good thanks okay so uh so we'll go uh, to the slides now and see what is uh, maven so maven is a project management and comprehension tool that provides developer a complete build life cycle framework okay developers can automate the project's build infrastructure in almost no time as maven uses a standard directory layout and default build cycle look at look at this standard directory layout now we have created a standard okay if you are using maven you are using a standard like everyone in the world will follow now everyone in the world, world if everyone in the world follows something this means it's it's a standard correct like you are storing uh, these are files in a particular directory your uh, another person is storing the same uh, files in same similar directory uh, html files are are stored in a similar uh, in a separate directory Uh, like everything is a, everything is structured and the whole world uses it okay now it it becomes easy for anyone to understand the project okay he can go he can go to these uh, folders and see okay this is a i know this is they are using maven so uh, here must be all the java files all the java java files uh, here should be all in the resources section i have all the uh, html files i have all the uh, web related files css html js js javascript files and those files we are, i am having okay and this is a path where i'll be having uh, after i build my project my jar files get created so this is the place i'll be finding it so now everyone knows so this is they are setting a standard even my maven they are sending a standard okay so that is why maven is a called a project management tool okay it is managing the whole project okay it is main it is not just building it building is fine building is the thing what maven is doing like what you uh, creating a jar file from your complete java project it will create a jar file okay that is maven doing that is fine that is a build tool that is one of the thing okay for example you use mobiles correct if i say uh, you use mobile for only uh, uh, clicking pictures it's not correct right phone can be used your mobile can be used for multiple things but primary aim of your phone is to getting you connected with people correct but what is the purpose of a phone what is the purpose of a mobile purpose of a mobile is to connect getting connected clicking pictures and uh, browsing whatsapp facebook this is not your primary aim of your phone so similar to that primary aim of maven is a project management tool okay it is building a project it's for building a project it it gives you a standard where you have to place various things and giving a proper Uh, stage a uh, proper uh, look and feel to a project like how, how how your job projects look how your job project looks like okay and apart from that it is building as well okay it can build a project so that is additional feature you can say maven is not just a build tool people usually confuse on it maven is a build is one is build tool but it's more of a project management tool okay building a project is one of its feature okay 
so it is a project management tool and comprehension tool okay that provides developers a complete build life cycle framework complete build life cycle framework means so when you have a code i told you you compile it correct first you got to do you have a java file you compile it when you compile it your class files get created okay and you can run run this run this class file right we saw here we created a we use a java c uh, and uh, java file name this command that that was compiling a file compiling a java code and what it was getting hello dot class okay and using java and name of the class we were running that okay so compiling is one of the phase okay then installing it then packaging it you have to package it somewhere correct you have to uh, like i i told you right building a jar file correct building a jar file building a uh, war file that is that is called packaging war file jar file are these a package these are containing all the jar files inside it these are these are containing all the java files inside it all the class files inside it okay so maven is also packaging okay and then it's installing okay wherever you specify you can copy install it in your uh, i'll tell you concept of local repository and remote repository so here also we have the concept of local repository and remote repository okay so this is a your uh, in standard life cycle, standard directory layout i told you you have a standard now okay uh, in life cycle framework life cycle life cycle means throughout the life cycle of code of your code for example compiling packaging installing okay so all these things maven will help you okay maven provides developer ways to manage the following okay for uh, building or for for your builds like builds as i told you like you create a java file uh, you created a jar file out of your uh, java file you created uh, some jar files that is a package okay so you can manage your jar files using this documentation if you want to do uh, some documentations related to your project okay that maven can help you in that reporting if you have if you want to do some reporting activities like reporting your project builds and uh, those things so that you can do using maven dependencies managing the dependencies i told you right we have we can have um, hundreds of dependencies in our project for example i gave you a like like your java project might be dependent on uh, spring libraries hibernate libraries okay some spring boot libraries uh, some uh, selenium libraries so there are many many libraries your project might be dependent on so with maven you can manage all the dependencies okay versions of all, all depends you can you can always specify that okay this is the version of spring i am using this is the version of uh, version i am using for hibernate okay so you can manage your dependencies scms uh, releases distribution list so it it can manage everything it can it maven helps you manage everything so that is why it is called a project management tool okay got it got the idea of maven the concept yeah okay clear yeah okay then it says convention or configuration this is the uh, you can say jingle of maven convention over configuration so earlier what you used to do you used you what you used to worry about configuration okay used to worry about configuration okay uh, how will i configure it and uh, where would be my uh, jar files and where would be my java files and where would be my html files now with maven you don't have to worry about you have a convention now you have a convention now that your source code will be placed in this directory base directory of a project base directory is the name of a project like base directory like your root directory as inside src main java your java files will be placed resources your resources like your html files css files this will be placed under uh, this base directory uh, source main src main resources your test test files okay test files will be placed under src test okay your compiled byte codes compiled codes will be uh, whatever you compile it after compiling your java files your class files will be generated correct so they will be placed under uh, slash target okay after packaging it your build file will get generated okay you have your jar generated so where it will be placed it will be placed under base directory target classes so this is a convention that maven provides you okay now everyone knows that 
Now, everyone in the world knows that. Now, this is a project which uses which uses Maven. And if I want to source code, I will go into this folder. If I want to go into the resources, like what my uh, dependencies and those things are, I'll go into the resources section. If I want to check the test, like the unit test files which I've created, I will go to the test section. Okay, if I want to see the jar file which got created, I will go into this folder. Okay. So this is a convention that uh, Maven follows. Okay. It, it will not differ. It, it's not like that I create a different con convention. I will, I'll place, I'll place my all the Java files into test section. No, it will not happen. Only the Java files related to test will be placed in a test section. Okay. This is convention. Now everyone in the world will follow that. Correct. Got it. Got it. Then we have features of Maven. So some of the things we have already discussed. Okay. Uh, first feature is simple project setup that follows best practices. Okay. We have a bunch of best practices that we have created and the whole world follows that. Okay. And the, it's very simple. It's, it's very simple project setup. Like everyone, it's a hierarchical based hierarchical setup. Then anyone can look into your project and see what files are placed where. Okay. Consistent usage across all projects. Okay, so this was the standard that we were talking about, the convention that we have created. Okay, dependency management using automated updating. Okay, so that's what I talked about. So like I said, your project might have various dependencies. It can have Spring dependencies, it can have JUnit dependencies, it can have Selenium dependencies. And every every month, like your, uh, like every once in a while, your uh, these version of these dependencies upgrades upgraded, right? Technology is changing. Correct. So every time you come, they launch, will they will, uh, they will provide a new version of uh, things. So you can, your man, Maven can manage that as well. It will always use the latest one. So whenever, let's say one uh, version gets outdated, whenever a new version comes in, you can specify the version there. If you want to use the latest one, it will automatically update, update the latest dependencies. For example, you have created a Java file using Spring version 2.0. Okay, let's say after some time, Spring version 3.0 comes in. So your Maven, what will Maven do? Maven will download Spring version 3.0 and it will automatically start using Spring version 3.0. So your project is on the latest version. Okay. A large and a growing repository of libraries. So uh, people are like, it's an open source, correct? So people are just, uh, so in the in their main uh, repository, like Maven also also has a central uh, repository. Like uh, uh, there are so many libraries available. Okay, so you can always go and uh, download those libraries and start using it because it's a it's a it's a community based now, right? Everyone in the world is using it. So they they just create libraries and people start using it. That's it. You don't have to do everything from scratch these days. You just go and find if there is a library existing okay and uh, use the methods of those libraries got it got it raj shah yeah clear getting clear right any yeah, yeah. any questions Okay, so it is extensible with the ability to uh, write easy plugins in Java. So you can write plugins there and uh, we'll see that, you'll see that. Instant access to new feature with little or no configuration. Okay, model based builds. Maven is able to build any uh, number of projects into predefined outputs such as war, jar, metadata. So we saw that, right? So we have, uh, I told you, right? You can build, you can package any project. You can package a project as a jar file, as a war file and just deploy it somewhere. Okay. So coherent site of project information. Okay. You can, uh, using Maven, uh, so you can, what you can do, you can, uh, generate documentation as well. Generate a documentation for a website. Okay. Maven is able to generate a website and a PDF, including complete documentation can create a PDF of with a complete documentation, whatever you specify. Okay. Okay.
and then again you can integrate a maven with your uh, your source code uh, version control like git cvs and those things also it can be integrated with okay backward compatibility automatic parent versioning okay we'll see that parent as well i'll let you know what is pay uh, remember this i'll tell you what what is a parent versioning okay parallel builds so uh, parallel builds uh, we'll also see that okay we'll also see this feature okay better error and integrity reporting so i told you right maven is can be also use our reporting documentation and those things okay okay now let's uh mm, yeah so like in any software to install maven you have to install it like to you start using maven you have to install it so these are the commands you can use to install maven so we'll do that on our same uh, ec2 instance that we were uh, using okay okay and maven i'll tell i'll tell you that uh, there is a concept of pom okay this is the main that is the heart of a maven project pom file okay pom is project object model okay that is a xml file that is a basic xml file you will see, i'll show you so that is it is a fundamental unit of work in maven so whatever things we discussed whatever features we discussed about maven about managing dependencies about managing your jar or documentation everything versions everything so everything is done using a pom file okay it is it is a simple xml file that resides in the base directory of a project okay and your pom file contains information about your project and various configuration details used by maven to build the project okay so whatever things we are using to build our maven our project for example i told you example right you have your uh, project can use various dependencies okay so all these dependencies also you can specify in this pom pom.xml okay i'll show you that pom.xml pom also contains the like, goals and plugins okay while executing a task or a goal maven looks for the pom in the current directory we'll see that in the demo okay it reads the pom.xml and gets the needed configuration and information and then executes the goal okay so your pom.xml will contain these things okay it will contain your project dependencies on which of the files on which of the libraries and dependencies your project is dependent on it will contain plugins it can contain goals what are goals we we'll see that what are goals in the demo okay build profiles project version what is the version of your project okay developers who is who is developing it okay mailing list like who is going to be notified and all those things your uh, pom.xml is containing okay okay let's come to a demo like uh, we'll see that parallelly okay then it will be more clear for you so i'm going to my uh, ec2 instance you can see a putty yeah my putty is visible okay so uh, what i'll do i'll install it first okay install maven so i guess i have already installed so it will it might give a duplication error but yeah these are the commands that you can follow to install maven on a machine okay this success then okay. this will actually install it sudo yum install minus y apache maven so maven is a product for of, of, of apache okay apache is a owner of maven okay it has already installed so it is already on the latest version so nothing to do so when you are doing it you are you will see may, many other steps that is it is getting downloaded and those things okay then how to check maven version you have this command mvn hyphen hyphen version so if i check that i'll get this apache maven 3.5.2 so i have installed this version okay it will auto automatically pick up everything it will pick up because a maven will require java okay 
Maven will require Java. So first prerequisite is to have Java in your machine. Okay, I, and I assume you have already installed Java. Like in the previous session, we have already installed Java. Okay, so it takes Java version 11.0.3 and Java path is where it is taking. This is the same path where we installed Java last time. Okay, so you have our Java, uh, you have our Maven installed. Okay, so now what we'll do is, uh, we'll try to build up, we'll see how, how, how this project looks like. Okay, so right now I do not have anything in my, so I do not have anything in my uh, local repo. So let's go to my GitHub page and see, and see any Java project. Okay, so this is, I copied it somewhere. So you can build any Java project using Maven. Okay, any Java project you can build, but the prerequisite, it should have a POM file. Okay. Uh, so if you want to use this project, you can just fork it. Fork it from my uh, repo. Forking means you just, it will copy this uh, thing in your repo. Like you have your GitHub, open your GitHub and just go to my uh, GitHub page. Okay, just go to my GitHub page and just open it, maybe an examples. Okay, and just, you can just fork it. Okay, you, you just, uh, for example, you, you will have that option. When you are in my repo, you will see an example of fork. If you fork it, okay, then it will create the same thing in your repo as well. Okay. Or you can download it from here. This is my public repository only. So you can download, you can clone, always clone this uh, into your, into, into your uh, local repository. Okay, so I have uh, in this project, I see three. So I'm interested in only, so we are not uh, understanding Ant. So Ant is, uh, don't worry about it. Ant we are not seeing. Ant is also a build tool. Okay, similar to Maven. Ant is also a build tool, but people are not using Ant these days. It's because Maven provides you various additional features. Okay, for Ant, you are, like for Maven, you have this pom.xml. Okay, for Ant, we used to have build.xml. Okay. But there and and you have to manually manage manage some of the things, okay. But Maven is more about project management. In Maven, you already have a convention and you follow that convention. In and you it used to happen that other people also used to uh, define a convention like it it uh, it could be customized. Like it it did not specify a convention in and okay. You used to specify manually that. Okay, in this path, I have my jar files. In this path, I have my Java files. In this path, I have this. But for Maven, you don't have to specify it. It runs on a convention. Okay, convention, I already told you what we are following. Okay, we have uh, this convention. So inside SRC main Java, we have all the Java files. Inside SRC main resources, we have all the resources. So we have all this convention. Okay, so we'll go to dependency management. Just go to dependency management. Here I was, here we have two projects. Okay, basically, uh, okay, let's let's cover what is a, <clears throat> a parent. I talked about, right, parent. So uh, let's say we have a project. This is a project for a calculator, let's say. Okay, calculator. And a calculator would require multiple modules. Correct, addition, subscription, multiple, multiplication, division, and those things. So I have a, my main project is calculator. Okay, but it can, it it uh, it comprises of two additional projects. It, it comprises of two projects, addition and subtraction. Okay, addition is a separate project. Okay, and subtraction is another project. Okay, so this is a, this is a project for calculator. Inside dependency management, inside dependency management folder, you will see it is a project of calculator. Okay. So let's go to our first project. I'll tell you about the parent. Okay, let's go to our first project, addition. Okay, this is my project. This is my Java project in itself. Okay, so I told you, right, we have all the Java files in a proper convention. See, I follow a proper convention. Inside SRC, I have main, then Java. Okay, inside Java, I'm having all the uh, all the applications. So this is just an example where, where, where we are having just one Java file. Okay, that is simple. That is doing nothing. That is just a hello world. Uh, it's a, a dummy kind of thing you can say. Here you can write whatever code you want. Okay, you can write the code. You can have hundreds of Java files in this, hundreds of Java files in this path only. 
So all the Java files that you have will be there in SRC main inside Java. Okay, that is the structure we are following. Okay. And similar to this, you have uh, another project called subscription. Subscription. Okay. So here also it will have a source. Okay. SRC main Java. Inside this, you have uh, you have code for subtraction. Okay, got it? Getting the structure. And this whole project is a calculator. Let's say it's a calculator. A calculator will have two additional projects. It can be two additional files as well, not an issue, but we are creating, we are making it more complex. We are creating, it's an example, it's a just a dummy kind of thing. Like you, you can have a main project and inside that main project, you can have multiple projects. Okay, so I told you about POM file, right? I told you about a POM file. So a POM file is a project object model. POM is project or object model. A POM file is having all the configuration that your project will have. So if I go to my addition project, okay, I have my SRC folder. Okay, and I told you, right, this is my base directory. For addition folder, this is my base directory. Okay, for subscription folder, this is my base, base directory. Okay, and for my main project, that is my calculator, this is my base directory. Okay, and, and I, I told you, right, your, your pom.xml will reside in your base directory. So this is my pom.xml for my addition project. Okay, the pom file which you see. If I go to subscription project, this is my pom file. This is my pom file for subscription project. Okay, and this is my main pom file, like pom file of my parent project, like my calculator project. Okay, you're getting it? Raj, Shah, getting it? I'm just telling you the example of this project, like a structure of this project, I'm telling you. Okay, we'll try building it and uh, seeing what is a POM file here and how, 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 how does it work. Getting it? Raj, Shah, there? Yes, Puneet, yes, yeah. Clear it, it's clear, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, let's go to our... Uh, so yeah, so Maven gives you an advantage that let's, for example, this in here, we have a main project and two projects, two sub projects. Okay, it's two sub projects. And you can write a main, you can write a parent form.xml that can manage everything. That will manage these two. Okay, instead of, uh, so you can do multiple things. You can go uh, in, uh, execute this form.xml. Okay. It will create the jar file for this addition.jar. Okay, then you can go to subscription. Okay, execute this form.xml. It will create a jar file for this subscription. Okay, now let's say you have 20 projects inside it. You have 20 projects in the same file. Will you go into all these 24, 20 files in one by one and do uh, run the maven command and uh, build the jar files? No, right. You will need a parent file. That's why we have a parent file. I'll just execute this and it will build all the files, all the projects that are inside it. Got it? So I'll show you how this POM resume looks like. Okay, this is the parent POM I'm showing you. Parent POM means the POM file of the complete project. Okay, if I open, open this POM file, you will see this kind of structure. Okay, it looks it XML, it's an XML file as I told you. It look it it is it looking like this. Uh, is the screen visible? Like uh, is the screen big enough to be read? Visible now? Clear? Okay, this is my bomb. Uh, this is my bomb dot XML. Okay, what this file? What this file? What are the contents of this file? First, this will con this will contain a version. Okay, this will contain a version. 
Okay, first two lines you can copy that is this is a POM basic. It will tell you that it contains uh, it is all the project Apache and these kind of XML and schema. So you can copy that. these three lines you will find in every POM dot XML. Okay, model version. These things you will find in every POM dot XML. Now coming to other things. So these thing, these lines are actually telling you uh, the schema, the version schema, and those things related to POM. Okay. Coming to this. So now what we have in POM, like I told you, right? We whatever uh, whatever feature Maven provides you, everything has been has to be specified in POM. So ideally, what should POM contain? POM should contain the name of the file. Okay, the name of the project. Okay, so that's why you specified a group ID. Okay, there is something called a group ID, artifact ID, version, packaging. Okay, these are the things you might be seeing. Okay, let's go into detail what these things are. We first have a look and how have a look at this form. How does this look like? Okay, these are the basic information of your project. Okay, that this is your calculator project, and this will create a. Uh, this is the artifact ID version we'll see what these things are group id artifact id then it contains a name okay then it contains modules what are these modules modules are the internal projects that this parent form contains that was that i told you right with execution of this parent form all the projects that are inside this parent form in this parent uh in this root based directory will get executed for example if you have 20 projects inside it so you will specify multiple modules which you, which you have to build using this form okay when you build this form.xml whatever modules you specify here all will be built okay for now i have specified addition and subs subscription okay these two modules i want to build and these two modules should have their form.xml as well okay those are child forms okay this i'm telling you is my parent form okay parent form will contain all the modules okay and name of the parent this is my name of the parent Group ID is a name, it is my, this is my calculator is my name of the parent. Okay, and it will have modules called addition and subscription. Addition and subscription are the two other projects that are existing inside this. And these also in turn will be having their form products. I'll come to that. Okay, then you have specified properties. Okay, properties are the things that, uh, like variables, variables like J unit dot version, this is my version of the J unit 2.19.1. Okay. And whenever you want to use this property uh, anywhere, you can just refer to this property. Okay. J unit dot version. It, it will automatically substitute it with 2.1.9. Okay. This is handy in the case. Uh, let's say we have to use this property in multiple places. Okay. Tens or 20 places we have to use it in the same form.xml. And let's say we are using 2.1.2.19.1. Okay. So if you are not using a property field here, what we'll do on 20 places, we will we'll specify that J unit dot version is 2.19.1. And let's say tomorrow a new version comes in 2.19.2 or 2.20 comes in. We will go to all those 20 places and change it. Correct. So that's why we use a property in property. We specify, okay, this is my field. I'll just, I'll just, I'll, in that case, I'll just up, update it here 2.20 and wherever I have substituted J unit dot version, it will take it automatically. Okay, that is a use of properties. Okay, you can specify multiple things here, all the variables kind of thing that you can specify. Okay, then, uh, yeah, another thing I told you, Maven is used for dependency management. So your project might have various dependencies, I told you. So this is the section where you specify all the dependencies that your project needs. Okay, you have dependency management tag. Okay, then inside that you have dependency tag. Okay. Then you have dependency and all the dependencies are listed. This is my first dependency. Okay. This is my second dependency. This is my third dependency. Okay. This is my fourth dependency. Okay. You guys are comfortable with XML? XML structure you guys are comfortable with? Like you have a root and inside this you have a dependencies dependency opening opening of dependencies and how it is closed. See, after putting a backslash and it get closed. Okay. This is how dependency management, the first tag is getting closed. You guys know the tags, right? XML tags. 
राज शाम स्लाइटली Mm. Okay, for uh, for this Maven or for other uh, other topics you're mixing with? No, no. Until Jenkins, I think we are good. I mean, at least I am okay with it. But uh, since Maven, I mean, this coding and all started slightly. Coding, <laughs> see, coding, coding you don't have to do. Coding, don't worry about it. Don't worry about the coding stuff. That you don't have uh-huh. to. That your developer have to do. That developer uh-huh. does. Okay. So yeah, Maven yeah. is a. You just have to worry about the configuration. Okay, this mm-hmm. Maven configuration. You just understand this Palm dot XML. What are the things specified? You don't have to create. It will be developer who will be creating it. Okay. You don't have to create it as a DevOps guy. Yes, yes. Yeah. You don't. You don't have to develop. Correct. Your developer will be doing it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. You just need to understand what are the things in the Palm and how it gets built. What are the life cycle of a Palm? Okay, those things. What are dependencies? Okay, don't worry about the details like uh, versions mm-hmm. and those kind of things. Don't worry about that. That will change with every project. This is the project in which I am taking an example. These things will change with every project. Okay, That's you should nice. be comfortable with what Maven is actually doing. What Maven is actually doing? It is building up. We are using Maven for building our project. What does building means? We have a code. Okay, we have a complete Java project. We have a complete Java code. Okay, we have to package it somewhere. Correct to install it in a uh, production. Let's say developer is building a Java code, hundred lines of hundred Java files and those things, and he will de- he has to deploy this code in production. Okay, so how will he do? Will he copy all those Java files in production and then run them, compile them and run them? Run them? No, he will not do that. Right? He will create a he will package all those files. He will package all those files and install that on any server. Yeah. Correct. So that is why right. we use Maven. We use Maven for building. We are building our code with it. So for building a code, your you can you you we use we have this Palm dot XML. Palm dot XML is the heart of Maven. So you can specify in Palm dot XML everything version your version of your application. Okay, the dependencies. What are the dependencies your application has? As I told you, your project can have Maven and Maven dependencies. Oh, sorry, your project can have uh, Spring dependencies, JUnit dependencies, Selenium dependencies. There is dependencies your project might have. Okay, so all these depend. This is a section for dependencies. Here you can specify what is a dependency and what is a version of your dependencies. Okay, so what will Maven do? Maven, when you execute it, Maven will download all these dependencies by itself. You don't have to go and download this, download this. Download this. Download this. Download. You don't have to go and download each one individually. You just create a Maven file, this Palm dot XML, and whatever dependencies you specify, everything will get done. Get downloaded. Okay. Got it now? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you can tell me. Like whenever you have confusion, just stop me. Okay. You can just prompt me. Yes. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll start explaining again. Okay. Yeah. As a de- uh, like a developer should be worrying worrying about the code and those things. You don't you don't have to worry about how these code is structured and those things. Okay, you don't have to worry about. Okay, you have to worry about afterwards. Like when well, when I'm running it. Okay, when when I'm doing a demo, then you will uh, see that. I'm just explaining the code and ex- I'm explaining you this Palm dot XML right now. What are the what are the things your Palm dot XML can contain? Okay, even your developer will write this. You don't have to write it. your developer will have to write all these things okay but for the sake of understanding for for maven as a build tool you should know what it is doing correct so devops is all about that like there are hundreds of new things will which will come tomorrow okay it's not like that uh, you will uh, have to learn like every detail of all those hundred things you just have to understand what these hundred things are doing that's it and when you have issues in that 
just go and study that just to take four five hours and study that and then fix, fix this issue okay that's what devops is all about okay that's why you have to be flexible even if you are not worked on code let's say you have you don't have a development development background even then you should be capable of understanding at least what is what is happening no one will ask you to write a code okay they will expect you to understand the scenario what is happening there's a story understand what is happening okay that you have dependencies in your project okay you have versions of your dependencies an issue might come up like uh, the dependencies is not like what is a, what will the devops guy will do he might get an error let's say he might get an error uh, related to any dependency that okay java x dot servlet whatever this dependency is is uh, does not support this whatever whatever code has been written he'll get this error so how will he fix it he should in that case he should know that okay my uh, this error is coming because this particular version of uh, java x dot servlet is old okay he will go to this pom.xml file he will find this java x dot servlet in that code okay and and he will just change it to 2.6 okay he will just change it to 2.6 or the latest version then it then again he will run his jenkins job okay everything will work fine now okay now he did not go into the code and did all those uh, things that he, he did not do all the debugging in the code correct he did not go to my java file and went inside java file checked okay what was what is the issue and that on those things he just went into the spawn.xml he just changed the version that's it so to understand that you should know like what is the dependency right what on and that dependency you don't you don't have to worry about this okay these things your developer will worry about because developer who has written this code he knows right what your code is dependent on getting it getting it raj sha this one yeah okay so this was dependency section okay and dependency section will also have we have these things you will see everywhere group id artifact id version okay these things you will see everywhere see good group id artifact id version etc you will see everywhere so i'll i'll show you what is i'll tell you later what is a group id artifact id these things okay then uh, you have build step okay how which plugin you are using to build okay you are using a maven compiler plugin most of the things are copy paste developer will also do a copy paste on this okay he can use various plugins for that plugins are something extra if you want to do okay here they are using here they are for building a code they are using this plugin and you don't have to remember it i'm telling you you don't have to remember this maven even i don't remember like what is a maven compiler plugin and these things when i used to do coding then that is fine i used to i used to have a background of what what is the version and what is this is this but uh, as i said like developer has to worry about it you don't have to worry about it okay then uh, this is for build this is for plugin is for build okay now this second plugin this is a plugin also you have you are using here in this project org dot code host dot mojo tidy maven project artifact tidy maven project this is keeping your project clean okay execution validate check okay these are the goals goals are i'll tell you what the goals are as well okay so this is how your maven files looks like okay it will have now let's see what these things are okay so you got the idea of what is a maven file this pom xml file it has artifact id group id version id it has all the dependencies okay it has all the plugins okay build plugins and those things it is having so So in the form file, what are the things do we have which we saw just now? Project root. Okay, this is the project root tag. 
you need to specify the basic schema setting such as apache schema and w3 or or specification the first line that we saw in our project this this thing okay here is specify the version and those things <clears throat> okay you need to specify the basic schema settings such as apache schema and w3 org schema so you have apache schema here maven apache dot org okay you have this location of the schema okay these things you are having then it will have a model version model version should be 4.0.0 Okay, that's why I said you just in the forms in 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 every form example you will see these three lines for sure. Okay, then comes your actual thing. Okay, group ID, artifact ID, version. Okay, group ID. What is a group ID? Group ID is an ID of a project. Okay, it is generally un unique amongst organization or a project. For example, a banking group, com dot company dot bank has all bank related projects. So you will. Group ID is for identifying a project, correct? So here, what is identifying that project? Calculator. Okay, so this is my project is for calculator. So this is identifying a project. Okay, if I go to my additional form.xml for my addition. Okay, if I go to form.xml for my addition. See here, what is it having? Three lines it is having common. Okay, three lines it is having in common. Every POM file will have these files, uh, these lines. Then it is having this thing extra parent. So this these lines are telling this POM file, okay, that I have a parent called calculator. Okay, and this POM XML is a child of that. Okay, calculator was my at my base directory, correct? And I specify in the calculator or in calculator form I specified. Uh, addition and subtract these two modules, these two child modules, okay. And inside the child modules form, I have specified the parent. Okay, that is linking. That is, this is just for linking. This telling the uh, this form dot XML that okay, I, this is linked with the compiler. The compiler, the calculator is a parent. Okay, and and you have uh, it will take the group ID of <coughs> it will take the group ID of the parent only if you are not specifying. Okay. Then artifact ID. Artifact ID, this is an ID of the project. Okay. So here your group was calculator. Correct. Your group was calculator. And inside calculator, you had addition and subtraction subtraction right so in i am in the addition in, i am in the pom.xml for addition so here i have artifact ID addition this is telling my pom that addition is my name of my project this is also uniquely identifying a project okay and the version what is the version of this okay what is the version of this so whenever i create a a jar file when I when I build when I, I can pack, I told you right on this I have a, a source and inside this I have a Java file so if I build it it will, it will create a jar file for addition correct what will be the version of that what will be the name of the jar file name of the jar file would be addition 1.0 okay if I take change it 2.0 then if I build it it will be addition 2.0 so version will specify what is the version of your code what is the version of uh, this jar file okay then uh, artifact id this is id of the project this is generally the name of the project for example a consumer banking along with the group id the artifact ID defines the artifacts location within the repository okay so it will give an idea like your group id is for bank let's say okay it's, group id assume it's a bank okay and inside bank you have a consumer banking so artifact ID would be consumer banking. Okay. Similar to, similar to our example. Our main was calculator. Correct. Our main was this calculator. So inside calculator, I have addition and subtraction. Okay. So addition will have this artifact ID for addition. Okay. Because this is uniquely identifying my addition project. Okay. And 
subtraction will be having for subtraction See, this is having artifact ID was subtraction, and it will have both will have version. What will have their one their version only? It can be one dot zero, two dot zero, three three dot zero, whatever. It can be three dot zero, but addition can be one dot zero. It can happen also that also because these are individual projects now. Addition is a project, subtraction is a project, and they are linked to my parent project that is a calculator. Okay, then version. This is the Version of a project along with the group ID, it is used within the artifact ID. <clears throat> Artifacts repository to separate version from each other. So version I told you right. So today let's say for addition, you are working on version one dot zero. Okay, you are working on version one dot zero. Let's say you made a change. You made a change in subtraction. Okay, in subtraction you made a change. Subtraction from one dot zero you made it to two dot zero. You made a code change in the code and that was for two dot zero. So here you will specify version as 2.0 in the subtraction. In the subtraction, you will specify 2.0 version. Okay. So whatever build you are creating, whatever jar file that will be created will be subtraction 2.0. And for addition, your build file which will be created will be addition 1.0. Okay. What these things? Now this is structure is clear for this project. Yes. Sure, Raj. Project structure. Yeah, yeah. So now that is the benefit of project uh, structure. So now see things are very arranged. All the addition things I have my in my addition. All the addition subtraction thing I my I have in my subtraction. Similarly, just as you mentioned, an example. There can be ten folders: addition, subtraction, deletion, multiplication, uh, square root. Uh, modulus, whatever X, Y, Z, hundreds of things can be here, right? And these hundreds of things can have multiple Java files. What if Maven was not there? What if we did not have a convention? All the hundred, let's say fifty Java files, all these fifty Java files would have been here only on this root. And how difficult it would have been to manage it? Correct. So we have separate folders of everything now. These are created as a separate project. Okay, and we are using form as a parent form dot XML. To build it, okay. These things are clear. Group ID, artifact ID, and version ID. Like group ID, artifact ID, version ID. Clear. Model version project. Two. These things are clear. Like these are basic uh, requirement of a form dot form dot XML file. Other things I already told you. Other things are dependencies and those things. So those things will be there in every form. Like here, see, if you see here also, uh, I have three lines common. Okay, in this I have parent, which is telling that uh, the parent for this addition uh, is calculator. Okay, and uh, I have artifact ID version ID of this addition. Okay, then properties. Properties I already told you. If you want to use Compiler dot source, it will be one dot six. Compiler dot target, it will be one dot six. And wherever in the code you are using it, it will just substitute the version there. Okay, then your dependencies, dependencies that your addition is using these dependencies. Java is dot servlet, servlet dot API, J unit. It is using. Okay, it is using uh, Surefire. It is using uh, plugins. You don't have to worry about what what these things are. The developer has to worry about these things. You just have to worry about what are what is the dependency. Dependencies is are the things on which your Java project is dependent on. Okay. So when you execute, when you try to build your project, what will happen? It will download all these dependencies. We'll see that when we are running it. We'll see that. Clear. The structure of the project is clear. Sha. Uh, Raj, yeah, yeah. Okay. Now we have a, a super bomb. Super bomb. I already told you. My parent bomb. This was my super bomb. Okay. This, this is my parent bomb. It will have 
information of all the modules that it has to build. So for now, I have addition and subtraction two modules. Okay, that's why in this uh, form, you see modules two, two modules. Okay, if I add other module, I'll write a code for division and multiplication, let's say. So I have to add two new modules here. Okay, so now uh, coming to the build life cycle. Okay, this is important. Build life cycle is important. Okay, so before that, let's bring this uh, code to our local repo. Okay, so right right now, this project is my remote repo, right? It is, it is on my GitHub currently. So let's bring this uh, whole project to my local repo. So what I'll do, I'll copy this this is HTTP, uh, this web URL. For this URL, I'll copy it. Okay, and I'll go back to my putty. And I'll create a directory here, cd, let's say, demo. Oh, sorry. I have to uncreate dir, demo. Okay, I'll do cd, demo. There is nothing inside it. Okay, so what I'll do? I'll create a, I'll clone, I'll clone that repository. What is the command to clone? It's git clone the repository URL. Okay. So it is, it cloned the whole repository. Okay. Clear? Increase the size. Mm. Not visible, right? Here. So I have uh, cloned that project into my repo. So these two, uh, I'll go to dependency management. Okay, so this was my project. I have everything here. Addition, okay, subtraction, okay. This is my pom.xml for my calculator. That is our main. I'll open it and you will see all those things that we saw. Calculator main and inside modules, we have addition, subtraction, and all those things. Got it? So, what will I do? So let's go to uh, life cycle. Like, what are the project life cycles? What is the project life cycle? Okay, so there are three life cycles. Okay, Maven has three life cycles clean, default, and site. Okay, we'll see mostly on default. Default is a build. Okay, clean is for cleaning. Okay, very clear. It's for cleaning. So let's say you build a project. Okay, you, uh, you will get to know clean. Okay, you will get to know clean. Don't worry about it. Let's come to the default life cycle first. Okay, build. Okay, these two are very easy. This is nothing. Build is important. Okay, build, build life cycle has multiple phases. Okay, a build life cycle is a well-defined sequence of phases which define the order in which the goals are to be executed. Okay, what is a goal? What is a goal? Goal is you want to compile. Okay, you want to package. Okay, you want to install. Okay, you want to build. You want to verify. You want to validate. So these all verbs, whatever you are hearing, validate, verify, uh, build, uh, compile, package. So all these are goals. Okay, these are the things what you do, what you want to do with the project. Okay. So these come, these come in the build lifecycle phases. Okay, so basically... In an interview, when someone asks you what are the three life standard life cycles, so you can tell him three: clean, build, and site. Okay, build is actually it com build comprises of many phases. Okay, build life cycle comprises of very in context of various phases. Okay, so what are the phases? So these are the phases. So first phase is prepare resources. 
Okay, what will the prepare resources do? It will uh, do the copy of those, like whatever dependencies and those things which you are having. So it will copy those things. Okay, we will not use mostly this. We will mostly not use this. So we, uh, okay, let's discuss what are these. Validate. What does the validate do? Validates the project. Validates if the project is correct and if all the necessary information is available. Okay, very clear, very, very clear with the name. Right, validate, compile, test. So what, what, what will compile do? Compile will compile your code. Test, what will test do? Test will run the unit test cases. Okay, so every project will have some unit tests also written, right? So you can write some unit test in JUnit or Selenium, whatever you want to use. So what will test do? It will run those tests. Okay, it will compile your code and it will run your test cases. Okay, package. Package, I already told you what is packaging. Packaging creates a jar file or a war file. Okay, and that thing we mentioned in our pom.xml. Okay, install. What install will do? Install will deploy your code into local remote, local maven repository or remote maven repository. Okay, so what is a local and remote maven repository? So whenever you install maven, there will be a, there will be a file called .m2. There will be a directory called .m2 which gets created by default. Okay. And inside .m2, that is your Maven home, you can say. Okay. Everything, everything gets, uh, for example, in Jenkins, you saw that in Jenkins, we had this uh, slash var slash lib Jenkins. So in the, inside that, you had everything about Jenkins. Correct. Whatever plugins you were downloading, whatever workspaces you had. Okay, all these things were in the same in the in that directory. Similar to that, for Maven, we have a directory called dot m2. Dot m2 is it it is a hidden directory. Okay, that is a hidden directory. So here also everything, all the dependencies and everything that will get installed in your uh, 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 local repo, local remote repo, local Maven repo. Okay. And there is something called remote Maven repository. Uh, we'll see that remote Maven repository in another section. Uh, repository is nothing. Repository is nothing, but it contains everything. Right? It contains uh, all the dependencies. Like whenever you download something, like your project can have multiple dependencies that we saw. Correct. It can have various various dependencies. Okay. So your when you execute it, when you when you compile it, okay, so Maven will also compile it. How will it compile? First, it will download every dependencies, correct? It will download all the dependencies. What are the dependencies your uh, project needs? And only after then it will compile it, correct? After compiling it, it will generate a class file. Okay, so this means it is downloading. It has to download all the dependencies. Okay, so where it will download? It will download it in the local repo. Okay, it will download your dependencies in the local repo. Okay. Then there is step called deploy. Okay, deploy what will do? Deploy will copy the final package to the remote repository. Like you will see that we have various types of repositories available. Uh, like repositories means uh, where you have to place the file. For example, uh, this jar file or war file that has to be deployed on any server. Okay, why are, why are we creating this war file and jar file? We want we are creating this because we want to deploy it somewhere. Correct. We want to deploy it on production. We want to deploy it on uh, UAT environments. Okay. So we have to copy after every building. A, after my Maven does a build, it will copy that. We have to copy that jar file or war file to a particular place. Correct. So that is a repo remote repository. We'll copy that uh, jar file to a remote repository. And from there, uh, we'll, we can initiate deployment to various uh, environments, dev or test or production or UAT or those things. Okay. We'll see that. So if I do, uh, and these are very, uh, and what these commands, these commands are, these are actually goals. Okay, validate, compile, install, deploy, test. These are goals. Okay, even you clean, clean is a goal as well. 
so these are goals okay so you with you with when you are specifying this goal you are asking your maven to do this if you specify mvn if you specify maven compile so it will compile your code if you specify maven validate it will validate your code if you specify uh, maven test okay it will test your code if you very if you say maven install it will install but it's not like that um, it's sequential it's sequential if you if you say maven install it will do all the initial things it will it will prepare the resource it will validate it it will compile your code it will test it it will package it okay and then it will install you don't you don't have to it's it's a waterfall kind of thing you understand if i specify compile it will prepare the resource first then validate and then compile it's not like that you have to write a separate command for prepare resources separate command for validate separate command for compile if you say compile then above steps are automatically done okay if you specify install all the steps above are automatically done okay so i'll show you i'll show you one by one okay so let's go to our uh, code okay so here uh, i'm going to my i'll build my uh, these uh, child projects one by one first okay i'll show you both the ways see i am in my uh, addition you guys are there right uh, getting it now it will be more clear right like like i'm showing the demo now it, it will be more clear okay so this is my addition folder okay this is my first project i'm building this is my first child project okay this is having a component xml this is having a src in src i have all the code that is showed you inside src i have uh, this main and this src okay yes. in src i have two folders test and main okay inside test i should have all the test related files okay app test.java okay and inside main i should have my main java file okay i have app.java okay so this is my structure right now okay so this is the thing in my source okay and i came back and i'm in my addition directory okay in my in my base directory of my addition project and i told you my pomodoro xml is always stays in my base directory and this is my pomodoro xml of my addition project so this should be placed in my base directory for my addition project and my base directory for my addition project is this correct so i'll write mvn so maven is installed okay maven is installed here go clear first okay i'll do a let's show where are we okay we are in my addition directory base addition base directory okay i'll use mvn let's do mvn compile okay i'm doing mvn compile first so what we compile do compile will compile all the files inside this source compiling will be done for the java files correct so i see i don't have to mention the path of these java files can be anywhere in the source so i showed you the structure right inside source i have a test i have a main inside main i had uh, java and inside uh, java i had app.java inside test i have test.java i don't have to specify here that go to this path go to src slash uh, java test slash java app.java go to src slash java slash main slash app dot test i did not specify anything i am just specifying i am just running this command on my base directory of my project where my pom dot xml is located in okay so i'll just run mvn compile so it will compile all the files that are present inside the source okay that is the beauty of maven okay i'll do a main compile see what it is doing see it is saying success okay see it compiled it say it compiling uh where is it uh some project no 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 oh i guess this libraries are all also installed already in my uh 
let's go for prepare resources okay uh, mbn prepare prepare resources Mm, unknown life cycle. Unknown life cycle prepare resources. You must be in a very large cycle or a goal. Okay, for prepare resources, I don't think so. We have a plugin right now in this project. Okay, don't worry about that. We will have other plugins. So, uh, I'll do a clear. So, we did what we did? Even compile. So, it, it, it actually compiled my project. Okay. Now see, there was additional, okay, let's clean it, let's run it again, okay. Uh, I'll do MVN clean. So see, Maven compile, what did it do? If I check my current directory structure, it has produced a target file, target folder. Earlier there were two folders, right? SRC and POM. After I did MVN compile, it compiled my project and it created a target folder. Inside the target folder, I could see my class files. Okay, see, target. See classes, CD in classes. So in classes are com, CD apple, CD com. See, I have app dot class. This is my class file for my app dot app dot Java. Okay, this happened after I compiled it. Okay, so. Now I told you what is something about a clean, right? I'll go to my project structure again, CD, uh, demo, event dependency, for example, depend. now I'm going to addition again. So I told you about clean, what will clean do? So whatever uh, you are, let's say you are building a project and if you specify clean, whatever is the target that gets deleted. Target is actually the thing that is produced after you run a goal. Okay, after you run a compile, your class files will get created inside a target. After you run an install, after you run a package, your uh, jar file or wall file will, will get created in the target. Okay, so if you run an MVN clean now, it will delete everything. Delete everything means it will delete a target. Now see, I don't have a target right now. I don't have anything right now. I have the source file and I have this mom.xml file. Okay. So let's go to uh, package. Let's try package. MVN, clean MVN, package. So if I read package, so whatever is above package, everything will get executed. Okay, now my code, now my Maven will uh, compile the code. Okay, and then it will package it as well. So if I run a MVN package, what will happen? See, it compiled the code. Okay, it compiled the code. Default compile, see, default compile. Then it tested it. See all the steps. Validate. It did a uh, resource, uh, prepare resources. Then it did a compile. It did a test. Test resources. Okay. And then it did a package. See, it created a package. Addition 1.0.jar. Okay, you see. So there should be a target folder again. See, target folder again got created. CD target inside a target you see a jar file got created okay now the jar file has created in my project okay now i want to install the jar file into my local repository and why would i do that let's say uh, there is another project there is another project that might need addition one dot jar okay so I will just copy this uh, jar file which I have created. I will store it in my repository. So any other project that needs it, 
can just refer to this jar file and it does just take it. That's it. Got it? So see, when I did a, and I did an MVN package, correct. So it did all the compilation also. Right? There's, there's, you see, a class file also got, got created. Okay. So it, it compiled it and also it created a package. Okay. So let's clean it again. MVN clean. Oh, no, so I'm not inside this. This MVN command should be run only if, where there is POM. POM, POM is lying here. So I'll again do MVN clean. Okay. So it deleted my complete thing. It deleted the target folder. Okay. Now, uh, since I did package, every all the steps it got executed until the package, everything got executed. Now, if I do install, what install will do, it will do all the things above. Also, it will install this file into my local repository. Okay. I'll do MVN install. Okay. See, it is, uh, it, uh, did all the compilation. It created a, a jar file. See, it is saying building jar. It created a jar file and it installed in my local repo. What is my local repo? My local repo does not mean Git repo. Git repo is something else. It's my repo of my Maven, my Maven repo, where I have all the dependencies. See, this is my Maven repo, root dot m2 repository. Okay. See, this is my local repo. If I go and open this, let's see what is inside this. So I'm in my dot M2. I have this repository. So see inside repo, you have all the dependencies that would got downloaded. Okay, whatever dependencies were required. So let's say I am, uh, let's do RM minus RF. I'll remove some of the dependencies, let's say. Um, 4J, Javax, JUnit. I'll show you how it is getting downloaded. Log 4J, log to it. I am removing some of the directories there. Okay, let's say I am removing these. Okay, now see what happens. So since I have already executed it once, so that's why uh, it downloaded all these dependencies. So dependencies I told you, right? So you have a Maven file. Inside this, you have like uh, this POM example. In POM example, you have all the dependencies, right? And when you uh, when you compile it, so all these dependencies will get downloaded first. Okay, all the dependencies, it's it Maven file will see that okay, this my uh, POM example. Inside POM example, I have all these dependencies. So what I'll do, I'll down, download uh, this dependency of this version, this dependency for this version, this dependency of this version, this dependency of this version, everyone, everything I'll download and then I'll compile it. And then I'll compile my code. Okay. So that's what it does. And it downloads the dependencies here. It downloads the dependencies here only. Calcutta, delete the Alberta as well. Okay, so now here are the, this is the location actually. Okay, if you see root dot m2 repository. Initially when you install uh, Maven, there'll be nothing inside it. It, it. You will not see these files when you initially install Maven. Okay. So, 
let's go to our project cd demo given examples dependency management cd actions okay so this is my project okay what i did uh yeah now let's build it let's build again i'll do mvn install so it should what will mvn install do mvn install should uh, do everything validate compile test package and install and copy this to my local uh, to my local repository so i'll do mvn install you see things are getting downloaded downloading from central downloading 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 so whatever i deleted it's getting downloaded now okay all the dependencies see uh, j unit i don't deleted log 4j i deleted uh, this javax dot servlet i deleted everything i deleted so now what so that is how it, it is checking it is going to the pom.xml it is checking okay these are dependencies it will see that are these dependencies there in my local repo or not if these dependencies are not in my local repo it will download those dependencies it will compile my code okay it will uh, prepare a jar means it will package it it will package it see it is preparing additional addition dot prepare yeah it prepared additional addition dot jar okay here and now it is install it installing uh, it is installing this addition dot java jar in my local repo so if i go to my dot root m2 repository so you see inside calculator inside addition i have addition one dot jar so now let's say other project let's say any xyz project want to use my dependency wants to use my addition one dot jar it can refer to this it can refer to this file as a dependency okay that can also have a dependency for my uh, addition dot jar it will have this okay i need addition one dot jar in the dependency and it's and in its form in in the pom file of xyz project it will have have a dependency for a addition jar got it raj are you getting it raj sha there yes we are here yeah getting it right so that's why we install it so installing it in local repo means the jar file which i download which i generated like the after my building my project there was a jar jar file which got generated if i want to use this jar file in some other project so what will i do in that other project i will specify this jar as a dependency that my project is depending on addition dot jar okay so i'll write a dependency group id as addition artifact id as addition id whatever and uh, version id a version as 1.0 so it will it will uh, it will say that it will it will mean that my project is dependent on addition dot addition dot jar okay now instead of so now my it will see then whenever is basically it is executing the pom dot xml for other project it will just check that what are the dependencies and it will see addition was is one of the dependencies and is already available in my repo on this path so it will just refer to it okay so so this is how i build addition so i can go to uh, next let's go to subtraction okay for subtraction also I, i can do the same thing see there is no target here right now so here also i'll do mvn mvn uh, install so this is this will compile the uh, subtraction code and it will build a subtraction 1 dot jar okay now it will install it it also installed it got it now so this is what i'm doing i'm going to every project and i'm building it okay so what will you see you will see a target here now so this means you executed a goal and your target got created and what is your target in the target folder target folder you will see the jar file okay the jar file and the class file in that inside the class file you will see all the dot classes okay
So, but let's say I have 20 projects. I'll not go to all these projects and build them one by one. Correct. So what I'll do, I, that's why I have a concept of parent form. Parent form. Okay, so I have a parent form for calculator. So this is my parent form for calculator. It is having two modules, addition and subtraction. So I can always go and execute some goal on this parent form and it will be executed on my child form as well because I have specified two modules there, addition and subtraction. Okay, what I'll do? Again, I'll do MV and clean. If I do MV and clean, so everything will be clean. Inside all these projects, inside all those modules also, everything will get clean. So see, now it is giving me calculator addition, success, addition, success, subscription, subscription, uh, success. It should ideally be name should be ideally. It should not be calculator main. It should be it should be calculator right. Why I don't know why it is written calculator addition. Okay, so I did a clean. So see now everything in addition. There is no target. It got deleted because I ran a clean on my main form. Okay. So yeah, let's see how we build our parent form. So if I build a parent form, what will happen? My addition will also be built. My subtraction will also be built. Okay. So I'll do MBN. So I'm in my parent form right now. I have my base directory of my project. I have my parent form, addition, subtraction. I'll do a MBN install. See. Now what it did? See one by one it is doing. It is first building Calculator, my parent. Okay. So for calculation, calculator also, because this is a form that is email, right? There's my three. Now I have three projects. One is a main project and I have two child projects. Okay. First, it will build the calculator. In the calculator, what it sees in the POM file, it sees there is nothing. It just goes and install uh, this calculator main, uh, whatever it's if this file in in the repo it just installs it second it's it built it is building my addition see here this is building my first project addition so you see here it is uh, creating addition one dot jar okay and installing it in m2 repository calculator addition 1.0 okay then next is it is having it is building subscription okay doing the same thing for subscription and it is uh, creating a subscription jar and it is doing and it is building it and it is installing it in my local report. Okay, see, and it is showing success. So it built everything. Got it? So I did not have to go to my addition separately and uh, build it, subtraction separately and build it. I just went to my parent form and, and I built both of them with the same command. Okay, now if I go to my uh, individual projects, I'll see, I'll see that. Okay. See, I have a target here. Okay, and in the target, I'll see addition one dot jar. Got it? Got it, right? Raj, uh, Shah? Yes, well. Okay, now what I'll do, um, so I did this manually. Okay, I did a git clone manually and I did it. But we can do this with Jenkins also. Okay, we can do this with Jenkins also. So let's go to our Jenkins and integrate Maven with it. Okay, so this was my uh, Jenkins dashboard. Uh, I go to new, I create a new project, let's say, or name of my project would be 
let's see maven testing etc i'll get a freestyle project Okay, in the description, I'll write uh, this uh, project builds a Java code using Maven, whatever. Okay, source code management specify Git. I'll link my repo. What is the link of my repo? Dependency management. Uh, the same uh, code I was, the same repo URL, okay? I'll copy it. Credentials, I already have. Last time I have saved it, okay? Branches to build, I'll build the master because I have just one. I have it, this is in master only, okay? Uh, what I'll do, build triggers. Let's build it uh, manually. I'll build it manually for now. Okay. Uh, build environment. No need to search anything here for now. Build steps. Okay. Build step. Earlier, what we were choosing? We were choosing execute shell. Okay. In the execute shell, we used to write uh, Java C and uh, Java C name of the class file. And we used to do like this, right? Last time we did this only in Java. Last time we did this only, but I don't have a single file now. I have multiple files. I have many Java files right now. So what I'll do, I'll use Maven. I build step. I'll invoke. I'll go to this step. Invoke top level Maven targets. Okay. It will ask me for a goal. So I'll tell him clean and install. Okay. So it what it will do. It will first clean my project. Cleaning means if there are already any uh, target files, target folders there, it will first delete it. And then it will compile, create, create a jar, and then install it in my local repo. It will do everything. Okay, let's go to the advanced setting. Because see, project I have specified this, this Maven examples.git. But in Maven examples.git, I have three projects. Correct, I have three projects. So it will not know that it has to go into dependency management and uh, run this. Basically, we want to run here, right? We want to go into inside dependency management and then then run Formula XML and run any file, any Maven command on this Formula XML, correct? So how will my Maven, how will my Jenkins know that it has to go inside this? Because in because here in Jenkins, I have specified this. It will bring everything. It will download the whole, what, what Jenkins does. Jenkins goes to a repo and it will download the whole repo in your workspace, correct? But in the workspace, in this repo, I have three files, three folders, but I want to run only this. I don't care about other two. I don't want to run this. So I have to specify it. I'll, ask to, I'll, ask, I'll have to ask Jenkins to go inside this directory. Okay, and then run my Maven command here. So what I'll do, yeah, in this build step, I specified goals as clean and install, okay? And in the POM file, okay, in the POM file, I'll specify the path of that POM file, which, which what is the path of that POM file? Because the POM file I want to run is this. So what is the path? Maven examples dep dependency management. Okay, so Maven examples is the name of the repo. So I don't have to worry about it. Maven, Maven, I have to actually go inside the dependency management. So where will the dependency management placed? It will be placed in my workspace only, right? So I'll write dollar workspace. This is the environment variable for this is the environment variable for Jenkins. Okay, workspace means the workspace of your project. Okay, like I told you, right? Uh, your Maven project will have a workspace. Like your uh, Jenkins project will have a workspace. So we had it already. Uh, where did we see? Yeah, this was a workspace, right?
So this was my workspace. So in my workspace earlier, what I did, I had this my name of workspace. Okay, git job. This this actually corresponds to the project which I'm having, the Maven project. This uh, uh, this git project, sorry, Jenkins project which I'm having. It corresponds to this, right? So it means there'll be a if I run this, there'll be a workspace called Maven testing. Maven does code testing will get created in this. Okay, inside Maven testing, what will it see? I have specified this, correct? HTTPS Maven Git example. So inside Maven testing, it will download the contents of this. It will download this whole repository. And what is in my repository? It is having three folders. And example, dependency management work and sample management. So I have to go explicitly inside dependency management. Okay, so what I'll do? Here in this, uh, I'll specify workspace. Where is my POM file located? POM file is located workspace slash dependency management. Okay, so here is my POM file, POM file placed. Got it? Got the reason? Aka, uh, Shah, Prakash, Ray, uh, Raj. Raj Shah got it clear why we are specifying the path here because we have to specify the location of the POM file on which POM file I am running this for this Maven MVN clean install. I have to specify the path of the POM file, correct? So I'll specify dollar workspace. This means my workspace directory slash dependency management. Okay. And I'm not specifying anything else. I'll just apply and save. Okay, since it is my manual build, I'll just go in and build now. See what it is doing. It is building it. So what we saw there, see it is built using Maven. Now you see installing your lib, so what happened? Let me show you the repo now. Now here it should be, there should be a new uh, project which got created. See Maven testing got created. If you have to Maven testing, I should have three folders as I told you, whatever uh, I wrote in my uh, Git repo. So my Git repo had three, right? Three, three folders. And example dependency management sample.java. So these three folders, but I explicitly specified to run uh, my Maven, this Maven command inside my dependency management. So that's why I did. So this is my workspace right now. Okay. This is my workspace. This is my workspace. Jenkins workspace Maven testing. So inside this, what I did, I did a dollar workspace. Dollar workspace would be this. In Inside this, I went to dependency management. I did workspace slash dependency management. So it will be CD dependency management. Okay. And, and I ran my Maven command here, Maven clean install. I ran here. Okay. So what happened? What happened? Again, whatever the same thing I was doing manually, which I showed you, again, the same thing will happen. Again, that same thing already happened. So here, uh, this command got uh, ran, mvn clean install. It ran, Jenkins ran it, and it created target folders inside uh, addition and subscription. Let's see if they are there. CD addition. See, I have a target folder. Inside a target, I'll have jar file for addition dot jar. Got it? Got it? Raj, Shah, clear? Yes, sir. Any doubts? Any doubts? Hmm? No, nope, we're good. Uh, so as you practice it, you're not practicing. That's why you're not having any doubts. 
Okay, just practice it because Maven is actually Maven is also important for interviews. Maven is important. They can ask you what is uh, compile, what is what are uh, build life cycles, what happens when we do a clean. Okay. Uh, what is artifact ID? What is uh, group ID? What are these commands? MVNP install. Okay, so let's say I'm changing something here. Let's say I'm dependency management. I'm changing a code and uh, I change my pom.xml, let's say. Let's say I'm upgrading something. I'll do a 2.0. Okay, upgrading, I'm just upgrading the version. And I'll just commit changes. Okay, then I'll uh, do something in my edition as well. In edition form also, I'm changing the version, let's say. For this, I'm putting the version of calculator as 2.0 edition version. I changed something, I did 2.0. I'm just upgrading the version, that's it. Let's see what happens. Okay, so my uh, edition version is on uh, 2.0. My uh, subscription version is still on 1.0. And my calculator version is on 2.0. Now let's uh, run my code again. Let's Jenkins uh, build again. Again, it is compiling it. So now see for addition, it created a separate jar. It created a new jar where lib workspace so it created addition addition 2.0. See, but for uh, subtraction, it created 1.0 jar only. 1.0 jar. Okay, and for calculator, it created 2.0 main uh, 2.0 form. Okay, now if I go to my M2 and see what is there, if I go to uh, CD dot, it's on my root, right? I'll go to CD dot M2, inside I go to repository. Okay, these are all the repositories. These are all the dependencies and everything got downloaded. So inside I should have calculator because I've installed it. Correct. I installed it. Installed the jar file. So I should have calculator. Oh no. Calculator. CD dot dot. CD calculator. So inside this, yeah, I have addition. CD addition. So my repository will have 1.0. CD. It should have 2.0 as well, I guess, but uh, let's see where it got installed. Edition 2.0, building edition 2.0. Okay. So we're installing, installing where lib Jenkins workspace. Okay, this might, it is copying, so it's easy. installing this. This file got uh, created after I compiled, after I packaged it, and then with install, what happens? It is moved to this repository, calculator, calculator addition 2.0, addition 2.0. So there should be addition 2.0 as well. Why is it not showing? It is going here.
Hmm, it is there. Calculator addition two dot zero. See here, you see addition two dot zero jar. Got it, guys. You see all the dependencies which I have downloaded. So all these are getting downloaded here only, and you don't you don't have to download all these dependencies one by one. See now for addition, I have two version, one dot zero and two dot zero. So let's say a third. That is the benefit of having installing it in my local repo. So I have now in my local repo, I have two versions of addition: addition one dot zero, addition two dot zero. Let's say a different project. Let's say a project X Y Z requires my one dot zero, and project A B C requires my two dot zero. So I don't have to create those uh, all the files for one dot zero in that project and create. Files for two dot zero and ABC project. I already have a build for those. I already have a jar for those. I'll just refer to those builds for project X Y Z. I'll refer to this jar. I'll uh, for project ABC. I'll refer to this jar. Okay, and it will check just it will just check that if these jars are available in my local repo. If they are, then it's fine. Then it's not an issue. But if they are not available, it will check the remote repo. Okay, it will check the remote repo. So that that is the reason we have to install it on remote repo as well for other projects to use. Okay, so that other projects like it's in my repo, right? If you are running this uh, currently, if you are using addition two dot zero in your laptop, you will not be able to run it because I have not copied it to my remote repo. Okay. So what you will do, your when you are compiling your project and if you need addition two dot zero, it will check if it is present in your laptop or not. Okay, so obviously it will not find correct. So it will give an error. It will say that it it tried to check the local repo, it did not find. It tried to check the remote repo, it did not find. Okay, but if if I push this to my remote repo, to my uh, remote to my remote uh, M two. Like a remote uh, repository for my Maven. Okay, if I if it is there, so you can also download it. First, it will check in your local repo. It will say okay, it is not present in my local repo. So it will go to the remote repo, and it will check okay, it is present in my remote remote repo. So it will download that uh, thing from uh, Maven remote repo, and it will copy to your local repo, and then it will compile your code. Okay. Got it? Clear? Raj, Shah, clear? Yeah. So that was about uh, Maven. So idea about Maven is this only. So it is it, it is a build. We use it as a build tool. Okay, build tool is for building a code. So you have a lot of Java files with Maven. You have it properly structured in a particular structure. For example, this Java Java file should be in this path. Your test Java file should be in test folder. Your target has to be inside. Your class files have to be there. So everything is a convention in Maven. You follow this. So that is that makes everyone's life easy, and you have all the life cycles associated with it. So you have a lot of Java files. You want to, if you want to, just compile those files. You do a MVN. Compile, so it will compile those files and create a, a, a class file. If you want to package it into a jar file, you can do mbn uh, package. It will package your Java code into a jar file. And if you want to install it, so it will install it in your local repo and remote repo. Okay, so that is what your build tool is doing. So now since we have integrated with our local with our uh, Jenkins. So what will happen? What will the flow will be? So whenever a user, whenever a, a developer commits a code, his code will be built using Maven, and and an artifact will be generated. Artifact means this jar file only. This is what the artifact is, right? These jar files will be generated and will be and it will be stored in its local repo as well as in the remote repo that we post. Okay. Now tomorrow we'll see where is the remote repo. We will see artifactory. Like where this uh, jar file that you are uh, creating, where it will be placed. 
okay where we have to copy it so that it might be it will be used for deployment what the idea clear any questions for today hmm any questions kaal shah no panit no so today at least uh, if you are not able to practice uh, these things at least go and look at the videos for jenkins and uh, this then it will be more clear at least for maven just look and then uh, we'll uh, pro progress uh, tomorrow we'll proceed with another step tomorrow then you got the idea of using maven right what is the use of maven why you why we are using it building and uh, dependencies and pomps pom.xml you got the idea right i don't expect you to remember all those steps like what is what is this dependency and that dependency versions and don't worry about that that developer will do you understand the concept why you are using maven how we are triggering it what is uh, compiling what is building what is packaging what is installing local repo local more local maven directory remote remote repo okay have a watch of this video again and uh, we'll uh, then let's continue tomorrow then okay okay guys let's go nidhi okay then let's uh, meet tomorrow then okay okay i'll share the recording and the slide thanks okay Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.